Memory of Water is an artist-led project that explores the impact artists can have on making viable post-industrial waterfront and heritage areas. It's a way to get to know each other, to experience uh, other cultures, other cities, other people, and in this way we are building the European solidarity. The artists will collaborate with residents, community groups, politicians, engineers and urban planners. Each city has also nominated very, very interesting artists with different backgrounds, different approaches. I think this collaboration is going to be very exciting for all the cities. Good afternoon and welcome to the Lore of Water. This is our Memory of Water Project Digital Lab. My name's Liz Gardiner and I'm your host and moderator for the afternoon. And I'm delighted to introduce our project leader, Ivona Price from Intercult in Sweden. Hello. Hello, Ivona in Sweden. Hello, hello from Stockholm. I am Ivona Price. Ivona, to open our, our lab, could you answer the question, what is memory of water? This is a great European cooperation, Liz. Uh, this is a project funded by Creative Europe uh, with six partner cities. Uh, and this is an artist-led collaboration focused on post-industrial waterfront heritage zones in those cities. The project started in July 2018 and will continue for two years. And the core purpose is to engage local communities in post-industrial cities like Gdańsk, Gothenburg, Stockholm, Gavan, Levadia, Limerick and Ostend sharing and informing about the regeneration process of post-industrial areas with the, with, with the cultural tools. What does it mean to be a post-industrial location? How can the reclamation of lost, ignored and disregarded histories empower local people to imagine and create a different future for them and for us. 
Liz, from your point of view in Scotland, why are you doing this project? From a personal point of view, um, Scotland is embroiled in this Brexit debacle, which we have firmly voted for uh, not to be part of. We want to be part of Europe. We want to remain firmly part of Europe. So it's very, very important from that point of view. But from the project point of view, what seems to be missing from our post-industrial waterfront zones is that sense of belonging. We, we've lost the right to the city through industry, property development, and issues of land ownership. So through the work of these artists, we want to discover, can we glimpse once again what city life might be like if we could take ownership of our streets and, and our waterfronts? So Memory of Alt Water is asking some important questions about how artists and communities can interact to create a new vision an alternative future for our post-industrial waterfront locations. Why, why, from your point of view, Ivona, is, is the project so important? Memorial Water, our common starting point is, is, is water, rivers and, and uh, seas and, and all kinds of waters. Uh, each of our cities has a post-industrial uh, waterfront. In the project, we meet each other places and explore our commonalities. Our view is uh, Europe's cultural heritage as a shared resource, uh, raising awareness uh, of common history and values, and enhancing the sense of belonging to a common European space. It's important uh, in both the national context, the local context, and the European context, because without history, there is no future. Uh, the question is, what do we learn uh, about cultures? Mm. Well, in our definition, Culture isn't a narrow arts focus. It's, it's not simply about arts development or the building of iconic cultural centers. In our definition, culture is a way of life. It embraces the history, the built environment, the post-industrial heritage of the landscape, as well as the stories, the traditions, the diversity of the people and ecology that's already there. So, Artists are really skilled at working with narrative, helping people to uncover and tell those stories, celebrating the past, visioning the future in a sensitive way that incorporates all of what has been there rather than sweeping it away and replacing it with the shiny new housing and, and retail develop, developments that we so often see in our European waterfronts. So, what do you think we're learning from our partners? Uh, we're learning a lot. We, le we are learning about uh, our commonalities and about our differences, uh, why we anticipate that some solutions will emerge from our deliberation, our discussions. We are already discovering that there are more questions than answers. In each participating city, uh, we are discovering that there are limits to the impacts that artists and local people can have when working together to creating new futures. And that's why we are now opening the dialogue, uh, our digital forum, uh, to uh, conversate, to talk with others, architects, planners, developers, local authority officers, cultural activists, politicians, inhabitants, and artists. Uh, we want to hear from all of you, uh, all of them, all of us, uh, in the unfolding futures of our post-industrial waterfronts. But uh, the last question is, what do we hope, anticipate, will be the success, the result of this project? What will success look like? Well, the, we've already been discussing this, the artists and the partners, and success is definitely about the quality of the engagement, the community participation, the new visions, and the empowerment of local people. 
success is measured by the level of dialogue we inspire. Have we been able to involve the policymakers, the developers, the planners? That's important. We want to make a difference on the ground, right? right? At the place As where well. we are in Levadia. We want to see the results that are not iconic cultural centers, high rise flats and shopping malls. We would love to see some incorporation of industry, heritage, local visions and stories, a mixture that would definitely be a measure of success. And we may or may not be successful in those terms, but there will be at last or at least a memory of what could have been that it could have been another way. And perhaps the power of our cultural intervention will ensure that it will be indeed another way. Thank you so much, Ivona. That has been a, an excellent, informative opening to our Lower of Water Digital Lab. And now we're going over to Lavadia in Greece, where we're going to meet with the mayor, Mrs. Yotopolo and her representatives of the local authority there to hear about what's happening in Levadia. Goodbye, Ivona, for now. Goodbye, Liz, and good luck, Levadia. First day, eh? Yeah. Well done. You have to look at the rest. I did everything more than uh, I expected to do. The guys who are going to be here are going to be here. Αστικό συγκρότημα της πόλης. Um, and in strings from sources that are in the urban fabric. Και τροφοδότησε τη λιβαδιά από τους αρχαίους χρόνους μέχρι σήμερα αδιάλειπτα, συνεχώς. And supplied λιβαδιά from the ancient times till today at all times. Γέννησε μύθους, πότισε, κίνησε τη βιομηχανία. Αφού η λιβαδιά είναι ιστορικά η σημαντικότερη πόλη της συντροκίνησης η συντροκίνη της βιομηχανίας στην Ελλάδα. Η βιομηχανική ζώνη της Έρκυνας που λειτουργήσε από τα μέσα του 19ου αιώνα μέχρι την πρώτη, την πρώτη δεκαετία μετά το δεύτερο παγκόσμιο πόλεμο, πόλεμο σήμερα έχει αποβιομηχανοποιηθεί είναι ένα τοπίο πολιτιστικής μνήμης. Η βούλησή μα είναι να διασώσουμε αυτή τη μνήμη και να την εντάξουμε στη σύγχρονη πόλη. Το σχέδιο του Δήμου Λεβαδαίων για την αναγέννηση του ποταμού μας. Συμπεριλαμβάνει αυτή τη διάσωση. Έχει όμως ευρύτερο στόχο να στρέψει την πόλη προς το ποτάμι. Να αναδείξει ξανά την Έρκυνα ως πολιτιστικό 
και οικονομικό πνεύμα τη πόλη. Το σχέδιό μα έχει ακόμα τον στόχο να κατρεφτιστεί η πόλη στο ποτάμι. Να αναβαπτιστεί μέσα από μια διαδικασία δημιουργική αυτοσυνείδηση. Μέσα από τι δράσει και την ενεργή συμμετοχή των δημοτών. Η ενεργοποίηση και συμμετοχή των δημοτών είναι κλειδί για την επιτυχία του σχεδίου μα. Το όραμά μα είναι να γίνουν οι όχθε τη Έρκυνα ενιαίο χώρο δραστηριοτήτων αναψυχή και μνήμη. For activities, recreation and memory, όπου παράλληλα με τη ροή των νερών where in parallel with the flow of water, θα τρέχουν η ιστορία, η οικονομία, η εκπαίδευση και η ταυτότητα της πόλης. Προϋπόθεση γι' αυτό είναι η ενοποίηση της παρόκτιας διαδρομής η οποία τώρα διακόπτεται σε δύο σημεία. A prerequisite for this to happen is the unification of the riverfront route, which now has been interrupted in two spots. The schedule must have been set in four sectors and three areas. Our plan has been developed in four sectors and has three meanings. The four sectors are environment and ecology. The four sectors are environment and ecology. The four sectors are environment and ecology. History and identity. History and identity. Economy. Economy. Technical and political activities. Art and cultural activities. And the three meanings. And the three meanings. The meaning of the open museum. Are the meaning of an open museum. That is, the Potami to be a place of memories. Συνείδηση, γνώση και ταυτότητα. Η έννοια τη αγορά. Um, δηλαδή η δημοκρατία, όχι η αγορά με την έννοια τη δημοκρατία, τη αρχαία oh, αγορά. Του um, Δήμου δηλαδή. Yeah. The meaning of the participation of the municipality, I would say. Δηλαδή η δημοκρατία, η συμμετοχή, οι ανταλλαγές, ο διάλογος, η ανοχή. That is the democracy, the participation, the exchanges, the opinion, the exchange of opinions, the dialogue, and the tolerance. Και η έννοια του νερού. And of course, the meaning of water. Το ποτάμι ως χώρος αναζωγόνησης, αένα εσκίνησης, ροής και διαδρομής. The river as a rejuvenation source and perpetual motion, flow and growth of the river. The schedule of us has four characteristics. Our plan has four characteristics, has four features. It is symmetrical because it represents the energy symmetry of the motor. This plan is participatory since it requires the active participation of all citizens. It is anapticial because it represents Pluto. Είναι εξωστρεφέ γιατί απευθύνεται σε όλη τη χώρα και προσκαλεί νέε δυνάμει. Είναι δημιουργικό γιατί καλλιεργεί και ενθαρρύνει την πρωτοβουλία και τη συνδιαμόρφωση. Το σχέδιο έχει τεθεί σε δημόσια διαβούλευση και ένα τμήμα του έχει ενταχθεί στο ολοκληρωμένο σχέδιο βιώσιμης αστικής ανάπτυξης λιβαδιάς
που σχεδιάσαμε και θα εφαρμόσουμε την αμέσως επόμενη περίοδο 2019-2020. Ένα έργο μεγάλης σημασίας είναι η δημιουργία μουσείου υδροκίνησης στο παλιό εργοστάσιο Μήλο Μαπαϊάνου. Moreover, um, another project of great importance is the creation of a um, water park museum in the old factory of Papayoanu. Για το οποίο είναι έτοιμες οι μελέτες και έχει εξασφαλιστεί η χρηματοδότηση. For which the studies are ready and the funding has been already ensured. Η εφαρμογή όλου αυτού του σχεδίου θα αλλάξει ριζικά την όψη και τη ζωή του ποταμού μας. The implementation of this whole plan will radically change the future and the life in our river. Θα στρέψει πάλι την πόλη προς αυτόν τον άξονα ζωής. This plan will also uh, turn around the town to face this axis of life. Και ευεργετικής ενέργειας στην πόλη μας. And this axis of uh, beneficial energy of our town. Πιστεύουμε ότι το πρόγραμμα η μνήμη του νερού θα συμβάλλει δημιουργικά σε αυτό το στόχο. Νομίζω ότι πολλά έχουμε να δούμε από τις καλλιτεχνικές παρεμβάσεις των των δημιουργών καλλιτεχνών. I think that we have a lot to see from this artistic intervention of the artists that we have here in Vadia. Γιατί ακριβώς η συμμετοχή τους και όλη η, 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 ο διάλογος μεταξύ μας, η συμμετοχή τους με τα έργα τους, αλλά και ο διάλογος μεταξύ μας. Of their participation to their works of art and the dialogue that has been conducted between us. Θα δημιουργήσει επιπλέον ιδέες we'll ideas, που θα εφαρμόσουμε και στο δικό μας ποτάμι and we are going to these in our river, και ελπίζουμε να βρεθεί ένας κοινός τόπος and we hope that we are going to find a common τόπος, τόπος a common, ιδεών, a, τόπος a ιδεών. Common, a common place where we are going to develop our ideas που πιθανόν να χρησιμοποιήσουν και άλλες πόλεις με ποτάμια και στη χώρα μας, αλλά και στην Ευρώπη. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ Thank you very και σας περιμένουμε στη Λιβαδιά. Good morning. My name is uh, Theo Mirogiannis. I'm an architect engineer uh, specialized in urban regeneration projects. Uh, the river of Herkina in Livadia is the most characteristic landmark of our uh, city. The big contradiction, however, is that compared to other uh, European cities, Levadia seems to have turned its back to the river. Uh, as long as the history Uh, as long as the history uh, is important, so contradictory is that the, it is the river at the moment is a degraded access of the modern city. Our efforts in recent years have been focused on understanding the reasons of this phenomenon so that we can properly approach uh, the vision of urban regeneration and uh, the redefinition of its relationship with the city of Lovadia. Uh, its physical presence has shaped town planning and social activity over the years. Uh, significant industrial and historical buildings remain on the backs on the river uh, up to date. But all this urban and historical memory seems not to have been incorporated with the modern city life. Uh, mainly the river is a natural environment with a microclimate and an ecosystem that the modern cities need so much. It creates a visual trace for the inhabitants and the visitors so that can, they can perceive the city in a different way. But certainly, it is an enormous backdrop for recreation uh, and direct contact with the natural environment within the city. All of these elements are the key to, uh, to energize the grand vision of revitalizing the river. But we have to say that it's not actually a simple architectural project because it needs thought and understanding. The group of artists that have come to our city uh, these days have come to enrich our observation to remind us that the world memory, uh, to show us different sides and visuals and to include them in our overall design strategy. 
their artistic expression shows a different approach uh, to reading space. And it is important for us to assimilate into our thoughts the valuable information that have come to share, and we are so grateful for that. What we need is a holistic approach that will access the both architectural, cultural, historical, and urban data, as well as social and economical considerations. For us, this is the ideal recipe for a successful and sustainable outcome that will continue to flow over time and adjust the needs of the city over the years. In terms of, uh, in terms of architectural design strategy, uh, one of the most important problems that we have to solve is accessibility because uh, the river is interrupted by the built environment. The visitor cannot have an overall uh, view of the route and it is forced to get immersed in the city. Direct accessibility will redefine the dominant position of the river and the continuous river bank within the urban fabric. The river itself is a, is a very nice place for recreation, promenade, sports, activities for citizens and visitors. Uh, there are plates in the river that are joined with the water and they can easily turn into playgrounds for children. Another very important issue uh, is the building facades along the river that reflect the historical evolution through the years. Many basements of uh, these buildings uh, are uh, in direct uh, relationship with the river but they are not in use at the moment. So uh, these sites have the ability to operate with commercial uses and creating a new axis of activities that will strengthen both the economy and the social cohesion. And in general, it will give a life to the city and to the river. The redevelopment, another issue, uh, is the tourism. The tourism is the country's heavy industry, and this is a unique opportunity for us to enhance, to enhance the tourist products of Levadia with uh, the, the development of small hotels and accommodation places for visitors that have a lot of things to see around in the wider area. The rehabilitation of old industrial buildings and preserved buildings uh, will be ideal spaces for development of cultural activities, museums, exhibitions, etc. The river itself is a very, very good place for such activities that have been launched with sustainable development plans by the municipality of Slovakia. In terms of architectural design, we have to say that the modern bioclimatic architecture has to be applied in all levels. Water itself can produce electricity, for example, by constructing small hydroelectric plants that can make energy to illuminate the river. This is a very good example, which is not only a way to uh, the energy saving, but uh, they are also technological exhibits for students. The microclimate of the river can be enforced by application of environmental materials in the pavement and the enrichment of planting along the river. So we can improve not only the thermal comfort but the general climate of the urban city. So the strategy for us uh, is, the overall strategy is clear, the strategy of the intervention. The architectural composition, the environmental design issues based on social, cultural and economic and historical data are the cornerstones of a successful and a sustainable urban regeneration project. The project that will redefine the relationship between the city and the river and give the new identity that the city of Livadia deserves. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, my name is Mary Conlon and I am the Artistic Director of Memory of Water. And the principal aim or purpose of this role is to support the artists in a series of artistic actions and interventions here in Lavadia. And I come from Limerick. I'm the co-director of a cultural resource centre called Ormston House in the heart of Limerick City. And I'm here with my co-director, Neve Brown, to assist the Greek team uh, during this week. So we're very happy to be here uh, in Lavadia with the artists for our second visit. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the artists are going to do this week. Um, and first to say that we had a research residency in January where we had the opportunity to meet with over 120 citizens to a series of intimately curated events which was organized by the Greek artist Rafika Chawish. Uh, and from that we heard about the history of Lavadia, the uh, deindustrialization of the city and the river, 
We heard from the mayor about her vision for the regeneration of the city. And we also met a lot of community groups um, who told us about their experience of living in the city and their relationship to the river. So the very first event that we have today, so the first event of the week is called Erkina's Garden. And this was inspired from our first visit uh, where we met uh, citizens involved with Epapsi and Ekepsi, which are two NGOs who promote uh, mental health and psychosocial rehabilitation. Um, they described the healing power of the river and the importance of connecting with nature. So today, the Irish artist Mary Conroy uh, will work with uh, Mary Michou, who is a local artist and also an agronomist. And we're going to bring the citizens from Epapsi and Akepsi down to the Riverside Park. And we're going to learn about the indigenous and local flora in the park. And we're going to collect materials and uh, share knowledge about our understanding of uh, nature in the city and green cities and we're going to have a hands-on eco-printing workshop. So that's the first event uh, for Erkina's Garden. Then tomorrow morning everybody is welcome to come down to our headquarters at Nero Milos, which is uh, our studio and workspace, a meeting space uh, while we're here in the city. And everybody's welcome to come down and we're going to unwrap all the bundles that we made uh, of for the uh, flowers and the eco printing and we're going to assemble all the prints and make a very large um, uh, print which we're going to give to the city. So that is the, the first of, and second event of the week uh, with the Irish artist Mary Conroy. Ah, that's the first one. Um, so later on this evening the Photography Club of Lavadia uh, will be exhibiting their work. So 27 local artists have prepared an exhibition on the theme of water and this is inspired by the Memory of Water project. And as part of that, uh, Swedish artist and filmmaker Jonas Meerstrand will be screening his music documentary, The Singing Raven. And now you've met Jonas. So Jonas is also filming all the events, all the people we meet, all the interactions, the events, and he's going to be in every city uh, recording and documenting our experiences. <laughs> so we're going to have some short videos and clips and a longer documentary film as well. So this is to document the process, all the people we've met, and obviously all the artistic interventions. But also it's going to look at how each of the cities are looking at their river, are engaging with their river, how artists engage with the river, and also the regeneration process on each of, in each of the cities. So each city is at a very different stage of thinking about regeneration and their river. So this is Jonas. So tonight at 7.30, his film, The Singing Raven, will be shown uh, with the Photography Club of Lavadia. And that's at the Art Café Astradeni. Have I pronounced that correctly? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Okay. Um, so then on Thursday, we have another workshop, and this is open to all the public, and it is also down at the, the Riverside Park. And this will be a stencil workshop by Polish artist Iwona Zianca. And inspired by the stories that people from the community here told us about the river, she has made stencils. Uh, that we will then print onto different cotton products, onto bags, t-shirts that people can take away with them. So everybody can come down to the park, we'll talk about these stories about the river that were shared with us. We will have a hands-on printing workshop and then people can take away what they have made with them at the end of the day. So that is our next workshop. And so on Friday we're going to do a walkabout and we're going to visit two artists, two murals. Um, the first is by the Polish artist Ivona, who I just talked about. And she is also creating a mural at a house along the river. And on our first visit, as we were walking along the river, she saw a house with no facade facing the river. And she was really inspired by, uh, by this house and wanted to know more about it. Who lived here? Uh, what were the stories of the families? Where were they now? How long is the, the building empty? So with the help of local historian and with the Greek team, Andreas and Lambros, um, we have collected stories from the family about the families who used to live there. And she is creating a mural in this house 
So we got permission to access this house and she is going to make a mural to tell the stories that were shared with us about the people who used to live there. So a really beautiful project looking at the idea of history from below. So very much from the perspective of the citizens and the families of Lavadia and their relationship to the river. So we will visit Avona's mural and then we will uh, visit a second mural. Uh, by Siegfried Wink, who is uh, the Belgian artist who joins us from Ostend. And he is working on a very, very large scale uh, mural of the myth of Erkina. So this is the origin story of uh, Levadia's river, the river Erkina. Uh, and uh, Siegfried was inspired uh, during our first residency by this traditional symposium uh, where we were hosted and we shared again stories about our different cities but also the myths and mythologies. So he is taking the story of uh, Erkina and her goose and he is currently sketching and he will begin to paint today uh, a very large scale mural about the myth of Erkina. So we will go and visit him uh, while he's painting. Also while uh, Siegfried is here he will also reconnect with the graffiti crews who we met again during the first residency and they will share tips and skills and exchange knowledge. So uh, all the people who we met at the first residency we want to reconnect with again and we also want more people to join us and to meet as many people as possible. And then finally, can I get a glass of water? Sorry, I need to... What we, have we have plenty of water, thank you. Ah. And then finally, the final event, which is the largest in scale, is with Scottish American artist T.S. Bell. And she has organized a procession from the former public laundry at Nero Trivi, again down to the Riverside Park. So with Avona and Mary and uh, Tara, they really want to highlight this Riverside Park, which currently isn't very much in use, but it used to be the city centre. So they really want to highlight this area of the city where there's a direct access to the river and the water. So when we arrive at the Riverside Park, it's going to be a party atmosphere and there are a number of elements. So we're going to have traditional Greek food, there's going to be storytelling. So different people are going to tell stories about the river and what it means to, to them. So we have people from different cultures, different ages, who are going to talk about what the river means to them. Uh, we will also have singing, so um, some songs and hymns from, by local choirs who will also sing songs that are related to the river. Uh, and finally, we will be um, washing items in the clothes. So this is a former tradition in Levadia, where people used to come down into the river and uh, wash their clothes and items. And there are some beautiful stories that have been uh, shared with us, uh, uh, stories of baptism, uh, people passing, uh, for example. But I will let the storytellers, the local storytellers, tell it to you on Saturday. So we hope as many people will come along and join us and to join in the singing, the storytelling, the food, and we'll all be together at this location. So this uh, event is called Let the River Take It, which is a wonderful Greek expression. Um, so uh, Let the River Take It will happen at, uh, we will leave, depart from Nero Trivi at quarter past 12 on Saturday, arriving in the Riverside Park at one o'clock, and then we will have our uh, storytelling, singing, washing, and party down at the Riverside Park. So we hope you will, you will join us. So if you want to find out more information on the individual events, obviously you can follow the Facebook event. We'll be posting every day. We're also on Twitter, uh, on Instagram, and our website, of course, memoryofwater.eu. So thank you so much for listening. And do come and visit us. We really want to hear, um, uh, hear all about your city and the river. Thank you. So uh, now we're going to show you some uh, videos from Ostend, our other partnership from Belgium. So we have like five videos that they have prepared to send. Unfortunately, we couldn't make a connection with uh, Liz from Govan because we had some technical uh, problems, experience, last minute problems. And now we're going to read uh, together with uh, Mary, one by one, the videos that we're going to present you. So the first film, please. Okay. So the first film from Ostend is a film about sustainability, uh, and it's called Proper Strand Lopers. 
And Proper Strand Loafers is a citizen's initiative that is active on social media and wants to make society aware of the waste problem in the world, but especially in one's own environment. So this is the, the first film from Ostend. Yeah, and, and the second film is about participation. The UI TPAS from Ostend is a digitally loyalty program to promote and improve cultural activities for every citizen. And in addition, it gives people in poverty automatic discounts. It's a very useful system for our municipality also. In short, UETPAS is your access key to free time. With the, that program, Austin, you save points with which you participate in an activity. You can exchange the save points for nice benefits. This is a very nice program. We're going to see the video and now. Okay. So the third film is about the policymaker yeah. of leisure, Bart Plaskert, and he gives an explanation <clears throat> excuse me, of the cultural policy in Ostenda and his engagement in the project Memory of Water. Uh, he talks about harbours in different cities. In each of these cities, we spot a vibrant port site near the beach, and he wants to involve stakeholders such as policymakers, local inhabitants, architects, and urban develop developers to utilize the history and memories of the maritime neighborhood in the public space. So this is very much a, um, a goal or an aim of Memory of Water to involve um, policymakers, communities, local inhabitants and architects. So this is from the perspective of uh, Ostende. Okay. And there is another film about the street art, an interview mm -hmm. with Sig Siegfried, our fellow artist from um, Ostend, who is now performing right now as yeah, we speak. Yeah, he is painting as we speak. Yeah. For the project Crystal Sheep, Siegfried Bing made a huge mural about the fish industry. We had the chance to see that, his work, when we were in Austin for the kickoff meeting of the program. And uh, Crystal Sheep is a cultural organization specialized in public art, producing over 25 installations, sculptures and murals per, murals per year. He will do something similar for the project here, and he's doing it right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now there is another last film. And then the last film from Ostende oh, yeah. is about industrial heritage yeah, and revitalization in the harbor area of Ostende. Oh, and we will have Muriel Keys uh, of the NGO Klein Verhal. Uh, and she will explain the City Lab methodology and the participation yeah. results of O666, oh, which is an organization that we visited during our kickoff meeting yeah. in uh, last November that Lambrush just mentioned. Uh, they have been renovating the building uh, with a lot of volunteers and the people who are involved in the project. And they started the programming of several activities there. So having visited them in Ostend in November, we're now going to see the progress and where they are now. And okay. that's the, now. those are the five films. Enjoy. <laughs> Welkom bij de strandkabine van, van proper strandlopers. Je ziet, we zijn vandaag opnieuw met een pak vrijwilligers en we gaan straks het strand op om nog een beetje te ruiken. Mensen vrijwilligers dweilen al jaren het strand af om afval te ruimen. Het is dweilen met de kraan open, niet te geloven wat je allemaal vindt. Dat is een restje van... ...van het vuurwerk. Ja, wat in de lucht komt... Kom terug naar beneden op het strand. Hè. Rietjes van de strandbaars. Hier zie je ook de restanten van, van de horeca aan de kust. Festivalbekertjes. Mooie vondst. Deze is van de NMBS. Bedankt. Bij zitbankjes vinden we ook vaak uh, sigarettenpeuken. Mensen vinden dat gemakkelijk. Het is gezellig, een sigaretje roken en dan hup, weg ermee. Soms werk ik wel een keer een poos. Uh, want ik heb soms, uh, als ik in de zomer raap. Dan heb je soms mensen die denken dat ze alles zijn. Dan, uh, dan zit je te rapen en dan is er iemand die in haar zetel blijft liggen. En dan zegt, vraagt ze van, kan je hier een keer komen, mijn zak? En dan wil ze dat in je zak doen. Maar ja, dan zeg ik van, kom aan, de vuilbak staat 10 meter verder. Hef eens jou, allee, sta eens op en ga daar in de vuilbak gaan doen. Het 
aantal dat ze vinden wordt gesorteerd. Samen met kansarme jongeren starten ze een traject op, waarbij alles wordt verwerkt tot kunst en nieuwe functionele producten. Aan afval zal het hen alvast niet ontbreken. Dit is de buit na amper een half uurtje ruimen. Dit is nog relatief klein, want het strand is net opgespoten geweest en genivelleerd. Normaal ligt er veel meer, ligt er veel meer op het strand. Hè. Out is a database with intelligent out calendars. However, out is also out pass. Outpass is a loyalty program with which you earn loyalty points, which you can redeem against a leisure or entertainment activity. The program offers advantages to everybody and at the same time it helps people living in poverty by offering them automatic discounts in a discreet way. Moreover, Outpass gives objective participation figures with respect to people's privacy. How does it work? Receive loyalty points from the desks or the separate loyalty points kiosks of one of the hundreds of organizations that accept Outpass. However, as an organizer of activities, you may also decide to work with the help of smartphones. This may be a useful option for, let's say, a walkers association that has no desks. Outpass users receive one point every time they participate in an activity. Once he or she has collected enough out points, they can be redeemed against an offer of choice. This offers many opportunities to organizers of activities. With temporary offers, they are able to attract new customers and invite Outpass users to try something new. Outpass users can also redeem their points against something that is available all year round. For example, a free entrance to the swimming pool or a walking guide free of charge and more, discount on cinema tickets or on the entrance of an art centre on the traditionally less busy days. A third kind of deal you can offer to your users is the customised invitation. Outpass knows the user's preferences. Being an organiser, for example, a museum or art gallery, you can use this to make an exclusive offer to a well-defined group. Here you may think of something like a ladies' night, open to all female Outpass users who sometimes visit an exhibition. Outpass is so much more than just a loyalty card. Outpass offers people who live in poverty the discreet possibility to make use of their right to receive a financial discount without others even knowing it, as everybody uses the same type of card. This makes it possible for people who have a low income to participate in leisure and entertainment activities without being stigmatized. For that reason, today's civil society is organized around Outpass as an instrument to lead new groups towards leisure and entertainment activities. After all, Outpass is a supplier of real data about real people. These objective participation figures come anonymously from the underlying database, enabling the local authorities and local organizers to focus immediately on the essence a leisure policy customized to your local council. Outpass. It's a great way to explore and experience. Als watersporter ben ik opgegroeid rond en op het water. En telkens als ik ergens in de wereld in een havenstad aanbeland, dan voelt dat een klein beetje als thuiskomen. Want iedere havenstad heeft eigenlijk een soortgelijk DNA. In iedere stad vind je naast het strand ook een enorm havencomplex. En in de huidige toestand is dit enorm in verandering. Sommige steden hebben ervoor gekozen om hun havengebied volledig te renoveren en een nieuw waterfront te maken. Wij willen met Memory of Water het anders aanpakken. Wij willen verder gaan. Samen met andere partnersteden gaan we met de methodiek van CityLab in gesprek met plaatselijke bewoners, met politiekers, met stadsplanners en architecten en gaan we zo proberen het geheugen van de wijk om te zetten in beelden in de openbare ruimte. En we lenen daar zeer graag Siegfried Vink voor uit. Hij is onze plaatselijke street artist. Hello, my name is Siegfried Fink. I'm a Belgium spray can, ar spray can artist from Ostend. And um, I specialize in large murals 
mostly using uh, local teams or mythology or local legends as a team for my productions, for my artwork. Uh, like here, I uh, did a large mural uh, about uh, the fish, the fish industry of Ostend, which made Ostend great. The mural I will be making in uh, Greece will be about the origin of the river, the river Erkina. It was a, a local legend uh, from Greek mythology about a girl and a goose who, um, who drowned in the river. And uh, this is the, the topic I chose. I always like to work around these kind of themes. It's a little bit of dark, edgy, but I like it. And uh, I will, the, the mural will be larger than this one. I'm trying to create a uh, very accessible uh, art for uh, the local people, something they can be proud of and can relate to. Um, and everybody in, in the city of Livadia will surely uh, understand what it's about. Welcome in the Vuurtorenwijk or OPEX, a new city development part of Oostende. And uh, we will be talking about 0666. New thing which happens in between November and April now, the scaffoldings are gone. Come in. Open. So, main thing that has been changed is that the building is waterproof, finally. After 20 years of water infiltration, there's no more water. Als watersporter ben ik opgegroeid rond en op het water. En telkens als ik ergens in de wereld in een havenstad aanbeland, dan voelt dat een klein beetje. Stripping all of the old, all the plastic, so we can get into like the basic layer of the building. Main drastic change is the building of the recording studio by Klein Verhaal. This recording studio has been built in three weeks by Koen and Bedouin. This recording studio is from Klein Verhaal and will be used as this in-between home recording and professional recording. So everybody is welcome to come in this spot. Well, the most important thing is not the building, but it's the dynamics inside the building. So we have been renovating with a lot of volunteers and old people involved in this project. And we started the programmation this Sunday. We invited a collective from Italy and Brussels, uh, to talk about their magazines, we had some activities with kids, we gathered trash from uh, the beach and we made some artistic installations Als with, it, uh, with the Want iedere So be welcome to join not only the building but of course the dynamics of 0666. Memory of Water is an artist-led project that explores the impact artists can have on making viable post-industrial waterfront and heritage areas. It's a way to get to know each other, to experience uh, other cultures, other cities, other people, and in this way we are building the European solidarity. The artists will collaborate with residents, community groups, politicians, engineers and urban planners. Each city has also nominated very, very interesting artists with different backgrounds, different approaches. I think this collaboration is going to be very exciting for all the cities.
Welcome to Govan. Govan, uh, the once the epicenter of shipbuilding. Welcome to Govan, situated on the banks of the, the River Clyde in Scotland. Uh, Govan used to be a centre of shipbuilding in Europe, but during the 1980s suffered industrial decline, as happened with so many of our European cities. And today is no longer driven the sounds of hammering, soldering and shipbuilding. We are about to see a film called Riverside Solidarity, which was made in 2017 during a project where we collaborated with Gdansk in Poland. signatures later um, you have uh, really uh, been an activist um, and encouraged local activism in terms of, of saving those docks. Can you tell me what were the proposals, the planning proposals that you were objecting to and why? Um, well the petition has actually reached over 12,000 signatures now um, but um, in terms of the plans for the site it's been owned by housing developers who have ostensibly land banked it for about 20 years now and back in 2017 they put forward a proposal to redevelop the site with up to 700 or 750 flats um, mostly in high-rise blocks so up to 10-15 storeys high along Govan Road and dotted kind of round about the site uh, we've been campaigning um, we've, been aware, we've been aware for several years that the developers intended something along those lines, but it wasn't until 2017 that they actually came forward and submitted something to Glasgow City Council for planning consent. So mm -hmm. we've been campaigning against that. We've been encouraging objections to the planning application. Uh, CDPI submitted a 34 page objection. We also issued template guidance for the public to submit their own objections, which about I think 40 or 50 people uh, submitted objections using. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were also objections from statutory bodies, from statutory consultees, including SEPA, the Scottish Environment Protection Agency, which is the, the government agency responsible for environmental protection in Scotland. And that was on the grounds of flood risk because the site would flood uh, in rising tides. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Their objection was based uh, mostly on the, the flood risk. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, it's on the floodplain and the river hasn't been dredged in over 20, 30 years in that area and of course with climate change and changing weather patterns we have rising sea levels and you don't actually know how often and how severe flooding on the site could be. I mean the and also the heritage preservation 
issue was the, the, the feeling was the heritage was not being respected. Absolutely yes, and that's why Historic Environment in Scotland is the agency responsible for protecting historic sites and buildings in Scotland also lodged an objection to the, the application. So we're all involved in this European collaboration called Memory of Water. Um, it's building and work that we've been doing with Gdansk over several years now through the University of the West of Scotland and ourselves. What do you see as the role of Memory of Water in moving all this forward? Uh, I think the environment um, um, international collaboration that we've been involved in, such as Memory of Water, um, the projects we've been discussing with uh, Gdansk and Poland as well, is that what we've seen uh, looking at Gdansk and looking at the Clyde, looking at Govan, is that uh, in both of these areas we see very similar post-industrial challenges. Most of the shipyards have gone, uh, jobs have been lost, um, and all over, um, not just the UK and Europe, but worldwide, we see urban regeneration that's been driven by private developers, it's been driven by kind of high up in local authorities mm -hmm. and really the kind of people in communities aren't being engaged in the process, at least not in the early stages of developing a, a vision for what that regeneration should be. And that's where the artists are coming in so beautifully, um, engaging local people um, and he helping people to have more aspiration for, for what could happen with these post-industrial sites. Absolutely, and the artists are involved in both visual and performing artists have been involved in initiatives that people of all backgrounds and all ages can relate to, perhaps in different ways, but it's something that can we can all relate to and it can bring everyone together to kind of focus around how we want to drive regeneration forward. Uh, what we've seen up until now, um, as I said, that urban regeneration has been driven by developers, driven by local authorities and the communities haven't been involved and very often we've seen that communities have actually been brushed aside to make way for new developments. This has been particularly profound in London around about the Olympic regeneration uh, but we also see the same in Govan as well with uh, fairground communities, show people being moved aside to make way for the new developments mm -hmm. as we also saw with the, the Commonwealth development in East End of Glasgow. And I think another important thing as well that the, the artists, artist interventions do is they, they help to raise publicity. So the aspiration is that Memory of Water encourages a dialogue with politicians, planners, developers. Is that possible? Absolutely, yes. It brings together and um, creates something that, every, that can bring everyone together and everyone can get involved in. And we can see that it's playing out in Austin, Limerick. Lavadia, Gothenburg, um, Absolutely, and yeah. Gdansk as well. So I, I know you're uh, involved in, in, in the walks to the docks, you take people on walks around the docks um, and you're just about to do one this afternoon. Um, why do you think it's important to, to take people around the docks and who goes with you? Yeah, well, we've been running this consultation uh, through the Government Docks Regeneration Trust and as part of that we're uh, starting a series of guided walks uh, so we're taking people from Water Row along the riverside to um, outside the Graving Docks uh, for safety reasons, not actually going into the docks themselves. But it's encouraged people to kind of look at the site, look around about the local area, uh, think about what they're seeing, and kind of get inspiration for how they think it could be revived. We're doing three different walking routes. Uh, we're doing one from Water Row to outside the docks, one from the docks along to Pacific Quay. Uh, it's the science centre which has already been redeveloped and another one that's taking in both of those routes but also going opposite to the opposite side of the river and back along which will be a kind of twice as long as the other walks and this will encourage people to kind of look at the graving docks in the context of this wider area of the Clyde and under and Govan and think about and talk to us and talk to each other about how they think it could be it could be revived. Um, so that's a key part of the consultation that we've been running through the Govan Docks Regeneration Trust. Another thing we're having is an architecture competition that we're running with the University of Strathclyde so that young architectural students in their final year can present ideas for how they think the docks could be, could be restored, how they could be developed. <laughs> Of that, so 
Ian, thank you very much. Um, thank you. We're going to go now to Gothenburg and see what's happening there. So part of our um, project of 2017 was linking up with Gothenburg, with, uh, with Gdansk in Poland. You've just uh, heard from Gdansk in Poland. And we had artist residencies, we had collaboration, we had artists sharing and learning from each other. And we've made a film of that project. It's called Riverside Solidarity, and you're going to see that now. Iverton. I'm an architect and artist based in Glasgow in Scotland and I've been working with artist Ben Parry on a series of installations both in Govan and Gdansk. Uh, in Govan we made an installation and sculpture out of rope that we found on the shipyards and we've come to Gdansk to enact a similar process. So in being here we've kind of looked at the area, looked at the old shipyard area and we identified uh, WL4, um, a group of artists who have inhabited uh, a building next to us and they've turned that building into studio space, uh, gallery space and one of the artists in this space has um, a lot of rope they found from the shipyard. So we're currently repeating the, the process that we enacted in, in Govan here in Gdansk using timber frame, using rope to create a sculpture which is also a, an enclosure and the intention of that enclosure is to reference the different types of occupation that are currently starting to, to move and take over the historic shipyard area in Gdansk so we're referencing the kind of occupation that happens when artists start to take over old buildings and inhabit old buildings and we're also looking at the other types of occupation as well large-scale government-led cultural occupations such as museums and also private developer occupation in the form of flats, shops uh, and retail. And in this location, which is strategically uh, next to the, the river, the main river that goes into the heart of Gdansk, you see examples of all three types of occupation.
here in Govan. I've been working with a team of seven people as part of an ongoing project called The Strong Women of Clydeside. And that sits under the banner of a sort of a larger collection of projects called Govan's Hidden Histories. We're looking specifically at women's roles in protest movements here in Govan. We've been looking at three specifically. So the first is the 1915 uh, rent strikes. So Mary Barber, Helen Crawford, it kind of links with the suffragettes. The second is the 1971 Upper Clyde Shipbuilders Work In. And the third is the 1996 Kinning Park Complex Sit In, which was a community takeover. Um, and it's really that second one, the Work In in 1971, which links us to the Riverside Solidarity Project. I mentioned that we've been working also with um, and collaborating with a really exceptional group of people in Gdansk. And they are part of a project called, or a group called Metropolitanka. Uh, and they've been working also for several years, so both of our projects are ongoing, um, to highlight women's roles in the solidarity movement and to begin to really redress, I think, the kind of profound underrepresentation of women um, who took part of that strike action in Gdansk. We've also had the opportunity to collaborate with Metropolitanka directly, uh, primarily with Anna Miller, and we found really speaking to Anna about their process has really generated a lot of interesting comparisons for us. And we've sort of found different routes or ways. It's been very generative to talk to them and also really inspirational. Also as part of the Riverside Solidarity Project, I had the opportunity to go to Gdansk for a week in August and to work with Anna and others from Metropolitanka. And together we devised and delivered a guided walk which incorporates some of the techniques that the SWAC team has been using um, and we have developed as part of our guided walks, which we kind of call art walks, which we've been um, doing here for the last five years. Um, so while I was in Gdansk, Anna and I led a walk around the former Lenin shipyard, specifically highlighting the role of poetry and song in the solidarity strike and the way that poems and songs and also slogans were sort of posted or painted onto the exterior wall of the Gdansk shipyard. So during our walk in Gdansk, we, we sort of alternated between English and Polish, um, highlighting buildings and spaces where women were working during the Solidarity Strike. Another thing that we did during our walk in Gdansk, um, working with Metropolitanka, was to rename some of the sh shipyard streets. For example, the street in front of the telephone switchboard office, we renamed um, Telefonistek, which means women telephone operator. So there's a single word in Polish. It's much better in Polish. <laughs> um, and this, this sort of renaming of streets echoes the work that the SWAC team does during our walks. So for example, um, when we're right here, um, we start our walks in the Riverside Museum, and then we come over by ferry. We end, we come up, along the pontoon here and up along um, onto this this sort of pavement and we have a, ho a whole timeline of women's actions over a hundred years from 1900 to, to the year 2000 and as part of that we also rename this street and other streets as we go through. Back in Glasgow in September, the SWAC team hosted our fifth annual guided art walk as part of Glasgow's Doors Open Day Festival this, this year. And during this one, unlike the previous, for the first time we incorporated some quotes from the women who were involved in the solidarity strike. So kind of threading through some of the things that we found in Gdansk into Govan. And Standing in front of Fairfield Heritage, which is, like I said, just down the, down the Clyde a, a touch, um, we quoted women who worked in shipyards both here in Govan and in Gdansk. And not surprisingly, there is a 
tremendous overlap in, in some elements of their stories and in the kind of emotions um, and the details of their experiences. We also hoped as part of this collaboration, and we continue to hope that we will find evidence of specific connections between those involved in the UCS work in, in 1971 here in Govan and those involved in the Gdansk solidarity strike in 1980, because those two industrial actions are only nine years apart. Um, thus far, we're still looking for those connections and evidence of communication between like the strike organizers or between people who were working in those two yards. Um, but we're confident that they exist. It's just a matter of finding the evidence or finding people who have those memories. Uh, hi, uh, my name is John Mullen. I'm an artist based in Leith in Edinburgh. Um, uh, participating on the Riverside Solidarity Project. And uh, in Leith, which you can see here, uh, I, I uh, had several years of um, research, research and regeneration process in this hometown of mine. Um, and um, one of the things that was interested me was the uh, the heritage plaques that were set up in 1986, uh, which were positioned all over Leith, and it was heritage plaques that were. Uh, acknowledging the history of various places in Leith. Uh, these plaques became very important for the people of Leith's identity um, that they fit, and they felt very attached to the place. And interestingly enough, um, even newcomers that come into Leith and, and make Leith their home, are, uh, they also love this history and the, and the fact that it's acknowledged. Uh, they were originally set up um, by by the SDA, the Scottish Development Agency at the time, to kind of make this place look attractive for uh, businesses and money to come in, investment to come into the area. So to kind of like uh, prettify the area, that there was some heritage here. And uh, so, well, you know, whether that was a cynical kind of ploy, um, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter because it became important for everybody uh, and the identity of the community. And similarly, I wanted to test that um, uh, idea uh, and that form. I wanted to test that in places like Govan and Gdansk. Uh, and in Govan, uh, I, I thought it was important to, to address some hidden histories or contested histories, uh, contemporary contested histories, uh, and, and test the idea of identity and if it is important. Uh, and effective in, in the government community during the Riverside Solidarity Project. In Govan, I was uh, making work concerned with uh, Govan Graven Docks, which is undergoing a kind of regeneration process uh, at the moment. Um, developers want to move in there and uh, kind of um, uh, redevelop the area, but without much concern for the heritage. So I, I wanted to do something uh, around that topic. Uh, I designed a, um, a heritage plaque to acknowledge the history of the site and uh, asked uh, for permission of the owners um, if I could uh, install the work. Uh, it went through several correspondences but uh, unfortunately uh, permission was never granted. I actually decided to uh, erect a plaque anyway which is situated uh, on, on the government graven docks. At the moment, there is a planning uh, consultation, uh, um, and the owners are, are looking for permission to develop that site. Um, whilst there are also uh, new developments um, with, with uh, uh, an interested party coming in who, who is interested in the heritage of the area, which kind of would complement my my uh, work during the project to acknowledge the, the heritage of the area and its uh, importance for the identity of the uh, government community. Uh, in Gdansk, i done a similar um, project looking at hidden histories on the shipyard in Gdansk, Poland. Uh, over the course of four years, I uncovered uh, um, the history of a certain Nazi-built building which was producing submarines uh, during the Second World War. 
Uh, I found that there was actually a, a concentration camp, uh, sub-camp, uh, uh, located on that, that premises uh, where they were using workers uh, from the camp to produce the submarines. Um, because the shipyard has gone through a big regeneration process similar to Govan Graven docks where developers are destroying a lot of the fabric infrastructure and heritage of the place, they also overlooked that site which I was um, interested and, and concerned about and researching, uh, the site of the concentration subcamp. So um, I've decided to uh, design a, a history uh, plaque to be located on the site, um, which is actually been uh, lying derelict and not developed yet. Uh, and I've asked the uh, owners of, of, of the site and uh, the conservation body of Poland to, to acknowledge the work or take on board and acknowledge the site and the history of the site. Uh, I also, during the project, uh, I done a, a community consultation uh, in the uh, Yusolidarity Centre uh, in Gdansk um, to ask the public what their opinion is, if they're interested in that history, that part of the history of the shipyard, and if they think it's important. My name's Andy McAvoy, I'm an architect, an artist working in Glasgow. Um, I'm partaking in the Govan Gdansk exchange programme called uh, Riverside Solidarity um, and it looks to establish links and common pieces of history between these two estuarine riverine territories. Um, I'm standing at, on the site of the former Govan ferry. Uh, I, I was born uh, perhaps just half a mile along the roads here uh, at, at a time when this river was very, very busy with manufacture. Uh, my uncles, my father, my grandfather all used this ferry regularly um, to go to their places of work. Um, common with Gdansk, it's fallen out of heavy production, but probably at a much more alarming rate. Uh, nothing is made here anymore. Um, however, there is some residual sense that this was a place of great manufacture. Uh, which has led to an awful lot of inquiry, predominantly from creatives in Glasgow. In a search for some of the missing narrative of this place, um, and having gone to Gdansk and seen some of the technology there, um, I have came back to Scotland with a kind of question mark in my mind about what do we actually know about what was made in places like this? Um, and do we understand the nature of that technology, the exchange? So I, I've launched a little project as part of the Solidarity uh, Network called uh, the Detonation Shed. Um, and what happens was we went to Gdansk and uh, we found, along with other artists like John Mullen, who uh, have been working in the project for a number of years, that there, Gdansk was predominantly um, involved in the manufacture of submarines, submarines that could have changed the course of the Second World War. And those very submarines um, were predating these estuaries of Scotland at a certain point. And we hope to bring the reconnaissance that we've undertaken in Cromarty back to Govan shortly, but also uh, to reflect on how the intangible cultural heritage that projects like this uh, allow for um, has affected uh, everyday, everyday people and perhaps give some kind of nod to the idea that uh, industrial heritage doesn't just die, the landscape will carry the narrative forever and if we react properly then we'll embrace that and um, allow places like this to have some authenticity going forward.
And now we go to Gothenburg, River City, as well as the uh, largest urban development project in Scandinavia. Also, after the Second World War, one of the largest shipyards in Europe. The lead partner of Memory of Water, Intercult in Sweden, working and acting from Stockholm, is however focusing on Gothenburg in the west of Sweden, a city with a relevant history of the shipyard. After World War II, the industrial plants in Gothenburg and the shipyards expanded. The car manufacturing plant Volvo launched a new model and SKF built a new ball and roller bearing plant. In the mid 1970s, a majority of the workforce at Volvo plant were immigrants, mainly from Southern Europe. A shipyard crisis blew hard against Gothenburg in the second half of the 1900s. From being one of the largest shipyard employers in the town, it was liquidated in Gothenburg. The old shipyards being converted into new housing, dockland areas, education centres, innovation and media new districts like Eriksberg, Sandgarden and Lindenholm. Now, years later, the history is being unlocked again and the urban development of the city is explosive. Gothenburg is a river city, one of the biggest urban development projects in Scandinavia. The river city of Gothenburg will see Gothenburg city centre double in size by connecting the city, embracing the water and reinforcing the centre. The developers and the city administration committed themselves to creating an inclusive, green and dynamic inner, inner city open to the world. Emerging along both sides of the river, River City Gothenburg spans many areas, among others the old shipyard area, Lindholmen, that will be shown in following films, and Ring Island, also soon being transformed into a modern housing area. The objective is to build a total of 25,000 new apartments and 45,000 new workplaces. You can track the progression of the project. And our memory of water gives a picture of the rapidly developing city where preserving memories belongs to artists like Jonas Mistrand, who is Gothenburg's representative on the Memory of Water project. He's from Studio Jocks in Gothenburg, originally from Stockholm. Jonas has for many years lived in Gothenburg since 1990, working as a filmmaker and guest teacher. The first film is called Now and Then, and it's photographs from 1918 to 2018 by Jonas Mistran and the Shipyard Associations in Gothenburg. Photos from Now and Then along the northern riverbank in Gothenburg, Sweden, an area of cultural heritage that once was the leading shipyard in the world. Pictures show an area which looks alike, like all other shipyard areas in Europe like the shipyard in Gdansk we have seen earlier, or in Govan. In this transition, we can follow, follow Jonas on the travel through the old and new Gothenburgs. The second film is a VGR film reportage. And in the film, Jonas Mistrand gives his view on the city with vanishing memories and his effort to preserve the city using virtual reality technology. Jonas dedicated his life to collecting memories of the shipyard in Lindholmen, working at the same time as a teacher. Jonas' dream is to create a virtual reality, an animation showing techn technology, technological possibilities to create an almost real-life environment so that the spectator can go into watching the work done at the shipyard, recreated out of old films and photographs. The, feel, the feeling that film creators want to achieve is a, a live environment, a digital museum of memories, also by Jonas Mistrand. And now we're going to watch the films.
Thank <laughs> you.
Vi vill skapa en upplevelse av en känsla hur det var under varvsepåken. Det var en sån viktig del av hela Sveriges historia. Frågar man en 20-åring i Göteborg så har de ingen aning egentligen om att vi var det. En sån stor nation inom varvsindustrin. När jag liksom fick nys om den tekniken där man alltså kan gå in i en upplevelse i 360 grader, att vara ett centrum så att säga, själv i en miljö. Det var då jag kom på att ja, det är ett bra sätt att berätta varvshistorien. Det tar tid så att säga, och det är teknik och det kostar pengar. Alltså, för det är ju som sagt det är väldigt nytt än så länge med VR. Jag menar, det är klart att varvshistorien finns i böcker och så. Och det finns ju lite arkivfilmer och informationsfilmer och så. Men det här är ju ett sätt som tilltalar väldigt många. Kanske framförallt yngre då. Jag håller på att försöka se om det blir möjligt att svetsa själv. Nu har jag en, en karaktär som svetsar någonting. Men jag vill att det ska vara möjligt att själv använda sådana här kontroller och svetsa själv. Man, man ska få känslan att man är en arbetare på varvet och att man håller på att svetsa något metallplåt eller någonting. Men om vi tittar på den, ja, till exempel den båten där hon som svetsar. Mm. Om vi ställer en stege precis där hon, den kvinnliga... Där hon svetsar? Ja. Jo. Vi skapar en värld där man kan gå omkring och uppleva själv om man vill bara och se. Men sen så har vi en ytterligare en idé att vi vill att man ska ta del av olika saker som man kunde göra under varvsepåken här. Som att svetsa och nita och köra kran och sjösätta ett sånt fartyg också. Och här är vi då utanför VR-modellen och stapelbädden där vi sjösatte fartygen rakt ner i älven här. Och det finns kvar en liten bit räls som ni ser här. Men annars är det i stort sett helt tomt. Det här var ett stora fartyg som sjösattes rakt ner i elven Och byggdes på de här stapelbäddarna. Det tycker jag är synd att det gick så fort med omdaningen och ja, att alla husen och att, att, att allt försvann. Det, det, det tycker jag är synd för det missade, det missade man. Då får man... Memory of Water is an artist-led project that explores the impact artists can have on making viable post-industrial waterfront and heritage areas. It's a way to get to know each other, to experience uh, other cultures, other cities, other people, and in this way we are building the Europe in solidarity. The artists will collaborate with residents, community groups, politicians, engineers and urban planners. Each city has also nominated very, very interesting artists with different backgrounds, different approaches. I think this collaboration is going to be very exciting for all the cities.
it for a first day eh? And that's all from our first Memory of Water Digital Lab. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Thank you to all our contributors in our partner cities. Thank you to our artists in Livadia who are making wonderful work in the sunshine. Thank you to the technical support team there, Demetrius and John, led by Lambrush Scarlas. Thank you to the local authority of Livadia and the mayor who's been so supportive of this project. Our next digital lab will be on the 7th of June and it will be coming from Gdansk in Poland with link ups to Govan and other partner cities. Please keep following us on the website for details. In the meantime, it's important we keep this conversation alive. Keep making comments on Facebook and keep the discussion going because we want to make a real impact on planning for post-industrial waterfront heritage zones across Europe. Thank you and goodbye.